Welcome to Backwater Casting. I'm your host, Rick Green. Well, as we kick off season 11 with Backwater Casting, we're facing a global pandemic called COVID-19, and our show is not immune to that. We started off this year with a different format, and our producer, cameraman, Sean DeLong, is going to come along and be our guest as well as run the camera. We're going to kick it off this year on beautiful Spednik Lake, early June, and as always here on Spednik, the wind is an issue today. So Sean and I are being a little extra careful this year because of the circumstances and we, bo we both got a mask. We've got a 21 foot boat so we're well separated but anytime we have to be close together we're just we're going to button up. He's got one on as well and I'm going to switch to a different life jacket for this. Okay I am going to start off with a little jackal jerk bait here. Hopefully this is a pre-spawn pattern so I'm going to start off with a jerk bait and we'll see where that takes us and then we'll progress from there see if we can figure out what they're doing so we've got a fairly brisk south wind already this morning it's only about 8 30 this morning and she's coming straight up the lake and the water's 67 degrees this morning which is surprising because we've had a number of, of chilly nights even last night was quite cold so 67 is a good temperature for this time of year and now Rick what's the technique for that bait so this, this is a suspending jackal re-range jerk bait. And I just, the basic technique for me, I, just, I get it out there, I just let it sit for a sec. I give it a couple of twitches to get it down and leave it a sec and twitch it again, let it sit for a sec. And the water's fairly warm, so I'm gonna move it a little aggressively. If this was really cold water, the pauses would be very long. This is not cold water. She's clear too. You didn't pass these rocks on that flat. Shows you that wind is brisk. That's 40 and I'm trying to get by that rock and not moving. You'll notice sometimes as Sean's pan panning the camera and we've got the boat marked off with uh, green painter's tape. So we've got every three feet. So we've got a piece of green tape across the boat on both sides. So that if Sean has to move up for a close up or anything, he still has that distancing because the tape marks the uh, three foot increments. So just being careful. Well, we certainly have to maintain social distancing. We certainly do. And a sensible thing to do. It's just, we've been doing very well in New Brunswick so far. I mean, very, very well. No, it's a bass. The, the jerkbait has fouled and he's chasing, look, he's still after it. Yeah, <laughs> the jerkbait's fouled and he, for some reason, there you go, look at that. <laughs> that, that. That bait was fouled and rolled over on itself and he wanted it. That's a nice fish to start off. Yeah. So. So, so this guy is not a monster, but no boys, oh boys, those jerk baits do, those hooks are needle sharp. And he's got it rolled over on itself. There we go. Yeah, he had that rolled over on itself. That was hard to get a hold of those hooks. Not a monster, but that's the start to our season for this year. And that's only four or five casts into the day, so. So what would that fish have been? About a pound, pound uh, and a half? Just about a pound and a quarter, probably. Still a lot of remnants of, of dead uh, cabbage and, and uh, eelgrass from last year down there, too. You can see it just under the surface. Not, oh, that was one, too. <laughs> so what's the significance of the dead cabbage? Well, it just hasn't deteriorated yet. They'll, the fresh stuff will be coming along. Usually dying grass the bass won't hang around it because uh, dying grass consumes oxygen and fresh grass produces oxygen in the water. Although some of that actually, I'll snag a piece after a minute, that, some of it actually looks pretty green. So I got two different kinds of grass here and they're both nice and green. So I mistook that for old grass, but that's actually fresh grass coming up this year. So it seems early for that too, because to, some of that stuff was three feet high. It seems a little early. So does that mean then casting and throwing in by that new grass might be a good strategy? I don't think it's thick enough yet. And I, I think these fish are, they're somewhere in the pre-spawn. So they could, they could be feeding up or they could have already be started to move up in the back on those cuts and stuff back in there. We'll know shortly. So we're gonna go to a tube, got a little bit of orange in it. But, uh, there's a lot of crayfish in this lake. So that little bit of orange, green pumpkin and orange, and just like they get a little touch of orange on the tip of their claws. And there's a big rock. 
So what's the technique for the tube? I'm, I just drag it. I'm just gonna. I just cast it in. And I'll lift it and drop it back down again. Drag it a little bit. And just move. Not not a lot of aggressive action to a tube. But when, now with the water temperature, what sort of the speed or retrieve technique? Slow on the, uh, the tube is a slow presentation. I, I basically I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to let it sit for a second when it drops. I'm either going to drag it ahead a little bit, or I'm going to lift the rod tip up, and like just like so, and let it drop back down again. So coming up, it probably looked like a crayfish skittering up away from the bottom and then going back down. And dragging it, it could just be a crayfish walking across the bottom. <laughs> Small, holy smokes, we're going the wrong way, boys and girls. <laughs> He wanted it. I, I felt him hit that three different times before he grabbed it, but yeah, we're going in the wrong direction. But at least it's a fish biting. It's a fish biting. And that was only the second cast with the tube, so that might be a good sign that they'll eat the tube. So Rick, I notice you're snagged now, so how are you going to get unhooked? We're just going to try and pop it off. It's a little harder today because the wind's going, but we're going to just got some tension on the line here, and I'm just going to let it go, and there she goes. She just, somehow it puts, a, it's almost like it puts a back snap in that line and pops the tube off. Now, should you also check the line in the tube? I am going to, yeah. What do we have? We have got here a bass. Wasn't quite sure there for a second in the light, but he's only about the size of the first one. I was actually snagged, and it's, it popped off the rock, and he grabbed it. So again, a crayfish would hanging around those rocks. That one looks to be a little bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going this time. We're going the right direction. Yeah, he's got. It almost looks like he's got. Can't, well, it's not alive. I thought there was little bugs or something he was eating, but anyway, nice healthy bass. Now, what would you estimate that one was in terms of weight? Yeah, he was probably a pound and three quarters. Close to two. Close, maybe close to two, yeah. He had some a little bit of length to him. So, Rick, you're switching baits. What are you going to now? Well, I'm just, I'm gonna keep mixing it up to try and cover water. So right now, that's just a, a number four silver blue fox inline spinner. So we're gonna just, we're just covering water to see if we can figure out what these fish are doing right now. Uh, we've had four bites and we saw one other one chase a bait to the boat, but they're all small-ish, small-ish. Now tell me about the blue fox. So this is this is a basic little cast and retrieve lure. There's nothing there's nothing fancy about it. You just throw it out and you wind it back. It, it just it's it's small and compact. I guess with the sun coming off it, it looks like a minnow or a couple of minnows swimming together in the water, and it'll basically catch anything in here that that swims. What do you got, Rick? I got another small bass, and he at the blue fox. So so far, we've got. We got them on a jerk bait and a tube and a blue fox, so we have not established a pattern at all. <laughs> yeah. We just gotta find I knew another year class there. Yeah. That means a good sign for down the road, but I'd like to see his Grammy. So this will kind of go back to what we were talking about earlier about moving baits and slow baits. So I have that straight 20 pound power pro tied right onto a swivel on that blue fox because I'm moving that fairly quickly. So I don't feel that the, the, the extra visibility of that braid matters very much. And if I was throwing it like earlier on a tube or a Senko, I would have a fluorocarbon leader on that braid. So what I do with this, with the, where it's direct braid, there's, there's no stretch to the braid. So I back my drags off a little bit to compensate. So it just gives a, it lets the rod take the strike and the drag will slip a little bit and I don't tear that away from the fish because there's no stretch in the line. There we go. That's a better one right there too. Again on the blue fox. Yeah. And this this is a this is a good bait to throw in this situation because 
we're, 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 we're on an edge, but throwing up into a bunch of boulders and rocks. So this is a nice quick presentation that you're not apt to hang up on anything. That's a, that's a decent fish right there. So you need far, the net? No. Just get them turned around. And up you come. Yeah, definitely, our, our definitely looks like our, our biggest one so far today. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah, nice, nice solid fish. And down she goes. There's a rock fall. That's why I'm going out of here really slow. That come up to, I guess it was deep. It was four feet under the surface. But yeah, we're going to make a bit of a move. Uh, we're right in a direct wind. It's really brisk and it's coming straight up the lake. So we're just going to try a little bit, see if we get a little bit of in the lee. It doesn't have to be calm, flat calm, but a little less chop than this. What do we have here, Rick? We have, what I'm thinking is another little guy. Oh, he's a jumper. Still think he's a little guy, but he's more active than that last one, which wouldn't say much. Come on. Amazing, we're in eight feet of water here, and I can see those, the bottom there, just as clear as could be. Be what a beautiful spot. Anyway, that seems to be our size range for today for some reason. I have no idea where the big fish are. That was on that Jack All Re Range jerk bait. Just a very uh, smelt looking bait. Nice and silver, just, an, just any minnow basically. <laughs> How not, does that fish look? He's, he's the same as what we've been catching. He's in that pound and a quarter, pound and a half range. Thinks he's a tough guy. Here we go. So this guy's somebody's caught this guy before. So that's a, a there's a little mark right there where somebody's had him before. So just a, a sure sign that uh, catch and release does work. And what you get him on? A tube this time. I've been really mixing it up this morning trying to figure out what it'll take to to put a big fish in the boat. And I mean, we had a couple on that flat over there, but just got a little tiresome fishing in that heavy chop. So we're just gonna look around, see what we can find over here. And this is another fish about the same size, Well, I'm right? wondering if this is the guy I saw swimming by. Come on. Putting up much of a fight. Well, he, he doesn't want to come in the boat. <laughs> come on, up and in. Yeah, barbless hook too, so it just pops right out. What have you got, Rick? Yeah, I got another one. This one's putting up a bit of a fight. Well, again, just mono line, so it's you kind of got it's like a rubber band as far as it's got some stretch to it, and that's the second fish that's hit it as far like full length of the cast away from the boat. So it gives them an opportunity to to put some fight into it. It's a medium action rod. I feel like we're on the edge of the spawn, and that would probably, and I say probably, that would probably be a male, and he's got no markings on him or anything, like he's got no blood on his tail or anything as if he'd been fanning out a bed, but this is a type of area that they would, they, they would spawn in if, if that's what they're doing, and they could be right now because of the water temperature at 67 degrees. There's probably fish in all three stages. There's, uh, you know, there's pre-spawn fish that are still coming. We watched one come out of the deep water a minute ago and swim up into here, and there could be fish setting up beds, although we're not seeing any. And both the both the fish I just caught came on the full extent of the cast, so 
So if, even if it was a bad, I wouldn't have seen it anyway, but we'll look when we get over there. But so they're at all different stages of the spawn. And I think they don't spawn all at once. And it's kind of like nature's way of making sure a whole year class doesn't get wiped out by staggering the spawn a little bit. And we're certainly not, uh, we're not seeing any really big fish today so far, but we're working on it. So how does the spawn cycle work for smallmouth? Well, typically, typically the, the, the fish move in, the males, the males will come up onto a flat. And this is actually a good example. We just came in here a few minutes ago, and this is a good example because it's got a mix of chunk rock and sand and gravel. So a male will come up in here and he'll find a spot and it could be the same spot every year. I've been told that's what they do. And he'll fan a, a, a circle out in the gravel and clean it up. And then he'll go out and he'll escort a female fish back in. The females tend to sit outside a little bit deeper and he'll wait and he'll go out and he'll hustle a female back up to the nest. And if she's suitable and they, she likes everything, then they'll spawn and he'll stay and guard the nest and she'll move back out into the deeper water. Typically the male guards the nest. Yeah, they're all the same size though. He was just on the outside of that rock point. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, anyway, no. No marks on him at all for spawning or anything, so he's not either not going to or he hasn't yet. So again, like you were saying, it could be a, a scattered season thing with smallmouth bass spawn. Well, I think there's some staggering to it, but also the, the guys that have studied them say that all smallmouth don't spawn every year. It's, it's almost like they're pre-selected in the fall and only some of them come in. And it's only a percentage of the total school. I thought there was another one underneath them, but he didn't stay with them. But again, same size. Where have all the big girls gone? There we go. And what bait did you get that one on? That's on a little blue fox too. I'm trying to see what he's got in his mouth, but he won't let me have it. It looks like he's eating some kind of nymph or something, a small black bug in there. He wasn't gonna give it up. So because of the black bug, would you switch baits to go to no, something else? No, I'm just trying to cover water and this is, this is quick. Um, not. I don't think they'd bed up in that stuff, but I mean, I'm not, we're not targeting bedding fish particularly. We're just fan casting on these breaks. So we've got, I'm in, I'm in 12 feet of water and looking at boulders right there. So it's a nice break all the way along here. How's this one feel, Rick? This one actually feels good, but it's hard to say. I got that trolling motor straight into the wind. So he's got lots of leverage for me back there, but he feels all right. He's not, uh, not one of these guys that's skating up to the top. Same as a lot of the other ones, he's sitting right where the dark water meets that shoal. So he's dropping, I mean, seven foot of water and the back's probably in four. And up, I would have thought he was bigger. Again, they're not all marked up though. I mean, these fish don't exhibit any signs of spawning at all. You'd think those young bucks would be all scarred up and their tails would be, would be bloody from fanning nests out. We haven't seen that today. I thought, darn, another snag, and then it jumped, so. How does this one feel? This guy actually feels decent, but yeah, he does. He, he doesn't look any bigger in the water, but he's got a lot of fight in him. Yeah, no, just the, he's probably got the whole jerk bait on into him and he's, it's just the way he's hooked, but yeah, he's putting up a fight. Okay, settle down, settle down. We're gonna get you. There we go. Well, he's not bad. Nice fight on that fish. That would be what, yeah. I mean, he's not the biggest fish today, but I'll bet you that's the biggest fight today. Yeah, he's full of it. 
He's a, he's a tough guy. Again, that's why the jerk bait. It's really windy today, and I can cover some water with this. And the water's warm enough, I can work it fairly quickly instead of that real slow retrieve. So it's a good bait to cover the water this time of year. And, and we've caught lots on it and that little blue fox, so it's working. So we'll see if we can get another one. So the hard bait seem to be better than soft plastics, well, would you say? Or? I don't think better. It's just that where it's so windy. Like as we were coming in here, the wind was pushing us. We were doing 1.4 miles an hour just with the wind pushing us. And that, you know, you're moving fairly quick uh, to fish soft plastic, unless you turn it into the wind, which we'll fish, we're gonna fish our way back out into the wind because we missed most of it when we were re-rigging. So we'll do that on the way out. Fish on, Rick. Fish on. Come on, darling. That's not a bad fish. No. Nope. He's fat, too. See, I'd say these fish have not spawned yet. You know, big, big fat belly. No, if that's probably a female as fat as it is, but yeah, well, that was the, probably the fattest fish we had today. We've had some that were like bigger, but for a belly on it, that one had a really, really big belly. So I'm saying a pre-spawn and uh, no marks on it at all. So I think they haven't, there's some on beds. We saw a few beds earlier uh, farther up the lake, but I generally don't think they're all on beds yet. Boys, that's our average, boys. We're not finding those big girls. He was right out off at the end of that point, which is where he should have been. I don't know if it's the same one that missed me the first time or not. I missed one, and then he come up and ate it. Goodness, I got to get some pliers. Come on. There we go. None the worse for the wear. He's chubby for the size of them too. So Rick, we uh, we missed the capture of that fish, but that's a nice fish. Yeah, and it looks the huge bait that he spit out right beside the boat there. I mean, that's a big, big bait, and he still ate that. That's a big bait, and he was still eating. Interesting that it shows the intensity of the smallmouth willing to uh, swallow a bait just after uh, eating that fish. He just, he had that and he hit my jerk bait. So it's pretty amazing. That's a big, big bait. That's I mean, almost the length of my hand. Well, the, the day of first, Sean. We had an interesting day, but this will be the first time we ended the show without a handshake. Uh, you got to be a guest and a cameraman. We've never done that before. We this had to is wipe first everything for me. down with Lysol, which we didn't do before. We've got the boat marked off in three foot increments with the tape. And we're both standing six feet we're apart. We're six so feet apart. Yeah. So this is our first episode for the season. Yep. Um, it was interesting, as I say, to be the guest slash uh, camera person slash producer. fisherman, yeah. producer. It was interesting. And here at one of our favorite lakes here, Spednik Lake. Yeah, and probably the roughest day we fished as far as waves. It was that incredibly was, windy. That was incredible. Anyway, handshake from afar. Elbows. It, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it, a good day, even if it was a bit bumpy. Yep. We always like coming here. It's a good day in the water. Yeah.